Oh man. <laughs> now this is this machine is way too slow, even for drones in the fast lane. Which is kinda funny. Hi, Uncle Larsen here again with a new video, and I found a new computer in the dumpster. Finally. This is a 286 computer. That's all I know. I haven't opened it up yet, and when I searched for 286 Micro AT, as it says in the front here, I couldn't find anything specific. So let's take this to the bench, figure out what's inside, and start restoring it. To open up the case, you need to push two buttons on the side of the case and just lift it up. Here we can see three cards installed. This is a graphics card. It has a TVGA 8800BR chip. It has both VGA and CGA or EGA connector to it. From what I can read online, it supports up to 512 kilobytes of RAM. This is a controller card for the hard drive. And a serial and parallel controller card. I start disassembling the case. I need to remove the front cover to remove the hard drive. There is a lot of screws I need to remove, so it's a bit inconvenient, but the case feels very solid and I do like the case. This is an MFM hard drive, and it uses two cables instead of only one. One for control, the big one, and a smaller one for data. The hard drive is a 20MB Seagate ST225. It's known for being very reliable, so I'm hoping it still works, and that I can retrieve data from it. Well, time to remove the motherboard and check out the damage done by the Varta. It has leaked, but it's not that bad really. So I remove the battery, then add some vinegar to neutralize the corrosion. I actually remove this whole socket later. I hate removing these chips here, but now since I have learned how to use this tool, I have to squeeze instead of pulling. How difficult is it then? Well, it's actually quite simple. And I get no broken pins this time. And it looks good, I can't see any green stuff there. I use the mobile phone as a magnifier to check out the sockets and stuff. The resistor solar pads are not shiny, but I'm not going to replace them or anything like that. But I do need to scratch away the green stuff on the traces there. After some scratching and cleaning, I put the parts back together because I want to test it. But I do have to check the power supply of course. Ok, let's test the power supply. It is connected to a hard disk. To give it some load. And it is scary, but... So far so good. Let's see here. 4.91, okay. Red is plus 5 volts. Okay. Yellow is 12 volts. 10.98. That seemed low, but. Blue minus 12 volts. Minus 10.89. Okay, let's see if it works. Oh, it hurts. Oh, listen. Let's try 
ça tape. One to forty seven. I don't know what disk type I have. For disk type details, press escape. According to Google, it's got to be this one, number two. Base memory, 512. Expansion, no, nothing. Hard disk unit error. Okay, maybe I need to. Okay, so now I am in the diagnostics program, and the only the really option I have is this one that I should use. Okay, so I connected the hard disk before the split on the cable. Now it says drive C. Uh, this drive type two, interleave three. I don't know. Let's try. Zero. Proceed, yes. Let's try. Um, I can't hear anything. Error. Attachment failed to respond. Now I think it's working. Pass. I managed to put the cable, one of the cables, the wrong way. <laughs> Passed. Okay. Let's try auto interleave. It seems to be formatting now with an interleave of 2. 194.1 kilobytes per second. That is <laughs> very slow. So the disk is working, but I had to format the drive to make it work. So I could not retrieve the data. I start cleaning the computer case and prepare it for retro writing. I have never tried that before, so who knows what's going to happen. A heat gun is really useful for many things. I got some conformal coating from my brother, but it was a bit difficult to use it. The coating is sprayed over too large of an area. I know it's not supposed to be used for this purpose, but I wanted to try out this instead of nail polish. I think there is a header for external battery on this motherboard, but I think it's nicer to install the CR2032 battery right on the motherboard instead. I've made some mistakes before by using a rechargeable battery. But you should not use a lithium ion rechargeable battery when the motherboard is designed to charge a NIMH barrel battery. So I cut the trace on the trace that goes to the positive side of the battery, and it's underneath the battery holder, so you won't see it either. Then I re-establish the connection with the diode, so that the current will only flow in one direction, and it won't try to recharge my non-rechargeable battery I will install later. And then I add some stuff under the front cover, so it will stay submerged under the water. I got a small bottle of 33% hydrogen peroxide from my brother, but I am worried it's not enough. The stuff I glued to the case got loose, and the case cover started floating to the top. So I just put some stuff on top instead. It's not sunny outside, but I was impatient, and I saw another YouTuber using artificial light. It worked for him, so I took the chance. Well, after 7 hours, I could not see much of a change. So after a few days, when the sun came back, I started sunbrighting it instead. I think the hydrogen peroxide has evaporated by now, since I don't think the lid is exactly airtight. But still, I tried to put those buttons in there and place it out in the sun to see what happens. 
I have more stuff to do, so in the meantime I remove some of the rest. I tried vinegar, but it wouldn't dissolve, so I used sandpaper instead. Then I spray paint it black again. Using sandpaper was not the optimal solution, but it will have to suffice. Now let's check out the buttons. Well, they are quite a lot whiter now and less yellowed. So I put the front cover in there also. It has been one more day of sunbrighting, so let's check out the front cover. And well, it looks quite a lot nicer now, but it also depends on the light situation, so I'm not really sure. So now the machine is reassembled and it doesn't look as white as I wanted it to be, um, but it looks a lot nicer at least. And I installed the CD-ROM because I couldn't find the cover that looked nice. And I installed the 3.5 inch floppy drive because I don't have 5.25 inch floppy drive. I haven't installed the BIOS battery yet, so I guess I need to run setup. Or, okay, so it does no drive type. Uh, floppy is 3, 1.44. You see it has 512 megabytes of RAM, uh, kilobytes, I will talk about that uh, later. So I'm booting now into, uh, I think it's PC DOS 3.3. And I can't access the C drive, so I need to go to FDisk, even though if the diagnostic program has formatted the, uh, the drive, I still need to Great partition here. I'm going to try to install uh, DOS by um, a command I haven't tried before. Okay. It's not that code there, is it? Okay. Let's see if it worked. I'm going to copy Jones from the disk over to this folder. It doesn't seem to work. What if I don't select the sound card then? Okay, it works, but why doesn't the Adlib card work?
Oh, it takes a long time to <laughs> do stuff here. Oh man. <laughs> now, this is. This machine is way too slow, even for Jones in the fast lane. Which is kind of funny. Okay, let's quit. So, the ad lib card, it was just not properly installed into the socket. So let's try again. It still won't load the game. Well, I just turned off the sound blaster, not the adlib. Uh, so we can at least see if the turbo button works. No change when I press the turbo button. I'm going to try Alicat. Hey, it works! So I'm supposed to take the mouse here? Okay. Oh! It's kind of fun, actually. Oops. Oh. Um. <laughs> okay. Ouch. That was a fun game. So the computer is now fully restored. I am not going to make a part 2 of this part 1, although I am going to make an update uh, one day with 500, not, yeah, 500 quarter inch floppy drive and perhaps upgrade the CPU, get some more RAM. I had a ton of trouble with the RAM, but to put it short, it doesn't read more than 512 kilobytes, even though it should be more. Uh, so I need to get some more RAM, uh, upgrade it to 1 megabyte at least. Perhaps I'm not going to upgrade the CPU, it's kind of fun to have a very slow machine also. I can use this computer to play games like Alley Cat, which was quite surprisingly fun actually. I haven't played it before. Perhaps I can try to upgrade the uh, IBM 286 I have instead, I'm not sure. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.